Hello everyone, I'm Colin Cadet. And for those of you who might not be aware, I've been out of town for quite some time, including uh, the Atlanta Wood Show. Uh, and a big shout out to everybody that I met down there, subscribers and vendors and, and attendees. Uh, I had just a great time down there, but now it's back to the workshop uh, and time to get some work done around here. Today, I'm making what might be the quickest jig I've ever showed you how to make. Today, I'm going to make a jig uh, that sort of clamps the router bit so that you can take the cap screw off that retains the bearing because sometimes these little cap screws they can get on there uh, really hard uh, and this little jig is going to save you a lot of time in taking those bearings on and off so let's get at it. So there's a bit of a sampling of some of the router bits that I have and you can see that some of them are a half inch shank and the ones in front here are a quarter inch shank. So there's going to be two sizes that we're going to make this jig for. In front of these router bits you can see I've got a sampling of different uh, bearings and these bearings some people don't know why you would want to change bearings but the reason you do that and I'll put a link to it at the end of the video because I've done another video on it the reason you would want to change bearings is because you can get a different profile and you'll understand that when you watch that video but the, one of the other reasons that you want to change bearings is because for example with this rabbiting bit for example when you put a different bearing on you can see that that you get a much a, a much different cut it affects the depth of the cut so that's an important a very important one to do but sometimes even these roundover bits when you change the, the bearing on top you get a little bit different profile to get a little bit different cut now, the first thing we want to look at with all of these bearings, when I flip it up, you'll be able to see very quickly the profile, the top profile. And what we're going to be doing, a little bit similar to this holding um, plate that I have here, we're going to be drilling some holes, and then we're going to drill a secondary hole, and that secondary hole is going to be used to hold a dowel, and the purpose of that dowel, of course, is to stop the router bit from spinning. So it's very simple to do, but the first thing before you ever get started is to figure out a depth that's going to work. So this jig is going to be very simple. It's basically just a board, and I've got a, a piece of scrap wood oak that I have here, and it'll be perfect for that. But when we look at the depth of it, the first one that I made of these many, many years ago, I made it too short. And the reason that it was too short, or how I knew it was too short, for example, if you put the wood down like that, if you lay it down like that, you'll you'll see that that one barely fits, but it, it bottoms out before it hits the wood. And it's important that these bits are able to go all the way down because the dowel that's going to hold them, the closer it is to the base of the um, the base of the router bit, um, the less chance you're going to have of bending or snapping the dowel and you actually get a little bit better grip on it as well. So it's important that whatever your longest bit is that you make sure that you can drill because we're going to, going to be going to the drill press and we're going to drill a hole right through for all of these so we're going to be using a half inch drill bit and a quarter inch drill bit and they'll go all the way through. The other reason for that is in case for some reason if the bit got jammed in your wood you'll be able to um, poke it out from the bottom rather than trying to pry it up with something that might in fact damage the carbide. So let's make some measurements and then we'll go over to the drill press and drill some holes. To drill these holes at the drill press, I'm using the drill press table that I made that uses these mag switches. And I'll put a little link just above there. You'll be able to go and have a quick look at that video. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to take my time. You can see that I've got it clamped on here, so I'm not worried about it twisting and I'm not worried about it coming up. And I'm just going to take my time and I'm not going to make you sit through all these drilling of these holes, but uh, you'll get a little bit of an idea.
Okay, now the next thing I need to do is to put in my bits and figure out what the profile is. And you can see that most of these are pretty much the same. When I put them in, I'll be able to, for example, I'm just going to put a, a little dot there where I can see it. And I don't know if you can see that little dot right there. But if I take the other bit out and put it in there, I think it'll work fine, and it will work fine. You can see that dot through there. So that's going to be sort of the center. Let's put a, and in fact, I'm going to just indent it a tiny bit there. Maybe you can see that better. So that's going to that's going to work for one size. But the next one, I already had a bit of a preview here. Have a look at this one. This one's going to be a little bit of a problem for me. Uh, and you can see that right down in there, you can actually see the hole. But this is a very important bit that I need to be able to get that bearing off of quickly. Uh, and here's the reason why. There's the, the two profiles that this, if I hold it that way, uh, you can see the two profiles that this bit makes. See how it's got the, the, the little lip here? So there's the round over and then there's a couple of little lips on and the other side it's just rounded over there you can see that a little bit better. So and that's when you take that bearing off those are the two that you get and that's this uh, dowel is going to have to fit sort of right over top and I don't know if I can drill another hole so what I may need to do is drill a quarter inch hole first of all and then a half inch hole so I may need to remake this hole just for this bit but I'm going to go back to the drill press and see if I can make that quarter inch hole with my Forstner bit. There's the holes that I've drilled and I actually took a moment after and marked them. I guess I didn't really need to <laughs> mark these uh, but these I was having trouble figuring out which one was the dowel hole and which was the through hole uh, but I've had a quick check of them and they work they work good. There's the rabbiting bit. So what I'm going to do, I've got these dowels of course and I'm, I'm just going to take them. They're nice and snug. I'm just going to drive them in and cut them off and I've checked this side as well and they all, all of these bits work as well and again I'll just drive the dowels in here and cut them off low and I can pull them out at any time if I want because they're only in there by friction. The problem one, which was this one, what I've had to do with that one is just take that dowel and just shave it down a little bit and what I'll do with that one because it will fit in there by friction but I'm just afraid I'm going to lose that little piece so I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on there and put the bit back in and that glue will hold it in there. But the other good news with this jig is that if you ever get a bit that doesn't fit these configurations and they fit all of my bits at the moment but look you can flip it over and you can start anew on the other side and and redo the same thing by redrilling holes. Okay let's do a quick check here and make sure that fits good there that's right there and the ra uh, rabbiting bit had a little bit different one but some of them will they'll also fit in there so uh, that'll work fine for all of them and this one the rabbiting bit fits in the regular one so I don't have to worry about that one and the rest of those are fitting nicely and that quad bit okay all right very good uh, and this one of course is dedicated to that one and it's still glued in there so I'm just going to let it sit there I'm not going to try it but it'll work fine because uh, you can see how snug it fits in there so that's good that's a great quick little jig well that concludes my video for today a quick and simple jig for taking the little cap screws off of your router bits and something to save you some time in the workshop I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web thanks for watching